Uh, yeah. Yeah, Mataji said it's 10.9.15. Uh, yeah, Kurmash. Okay, bring up the verse. And... Yeah, sure, Kurmash. Thank you. That's good much. Um, yeah, I can go away too. Thank you so much. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Tadama Bhaya Manasyaha Svabhakasya Kritakasaha Divya Gulo Nam Abhuktena Sandaden Yach Chagopika. Translation. When Mother Yasoda was trying to bind the offending child, she saw that the binding rope was short by a distance of the width of two fingers. Thus, she brought another rope to join it. <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada's purport here. In the first chapter of Krishna's exhibition of unlimited potency to Mother Yasoda, when she tried to bind him, the rope was too short. The Lord had already shown his unlimited potency by killing Putana, Sakatashura, and Trinavarta. Now Krishna exhibited another vibhuti, or display of potency to Mother Yasoda. Yes, I agree. Krishna desired to show you cannot bind me. Thus, although Mother Yasoda, in her attempt to bind Krishna, added one rope after another, ultimately she was a failure. When Krishna agreed, however, she was successful. In other words, one must be in transcendental love with Krishna, but that does not mean that one can control Krishna. When Krishna is satisfied with one's devotion, service, he does everything himself. Sevo mukehi jivado swayameva sparatyada. He reveals more and more to the devotee as the devotee advances in service. Jivado, this service begins with the tongue, with chanting, and with taking the prasad of Krishna. Adashi Krishna Namari Nabaved Grayam Indriyai Seva Mukhihi Jivado Swayameva Svaratyada. Don't go, no, go, go, go down, leave it the translation as the highest part. Go up to the translation. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, stop there. Go down a little bit, you too high. Go down one notch. Mm, okay, that's good. It's right at the end. Om again to Madanda Sya Gena Jana Salakaya Jaksuun Melitam Nina. Thus, my Shri Gadavena Maha, Nama Om Vishnu Vadaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale, Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine. Namaste, sirs, what did I go to Vani Pacharin in the Ursus of Sunyavari, the Sketiri Satarine? Bunch of cold blood to Rugus Jack, Ripus in Dapi, the Jack, Titanum, Pavane, Bio, Vaishnavi, Bio, no Mahoma Maha, Jaisi Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, 
Sri Advaita Kadakar, Sri Vasadi Gaur, Bhakti Rinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we are continuing with this uh, very intimate and very sweet pastime of Krishna stealing butter and his mother tying him up. Um, this particular Leela is uh, topmost in the Leelas in Vatsaya Ras. Seeing the determined effort motivated, motivated by pure love of Mother Yasoda. Why did Mother Yasoda make such an effort to bind Krishna? Did she want to punish him? The Acharyas don't give that uh, reason. The Acharyas, headed by Srila Prabhupada and others, say that Krishna was already fear fearful when he was being chased by his mother. And now she had caught him, or actually he agreed to be caught. And uh, she was worried that this fear would cause him to leave the house and do other things that were wrong or even hurt himself because of his fearful countenance. So wanting to protect Krishna against what she felt was his fear, she tied him up. She didn't tie him up because she was being disturbed. She didn't tie him up because she wanted to punish him. She tied him up at her motherly love so he wouldn't, wouldn't exhibit more fear and then run away and do other things, maybe to hurt himself or to cause more damage. So here we see now, Prabhupada gives a very deep philosophical principle, which is the foundation for the execution of successful devotional service. Sometimes a devotee thinks, well, I'm serving Krishna so nicely. I'm giving all I can. Um, and uh, I'm doing it with as much attention and affection as I can, serving with all my heart. And uh, Krishna seems so far away. He doesn't seem to be reciprocating my devotion. Here we get the answer that Krishna will decide when he wants to reciprocate and how he wants to reciprocate. We all, he is always reciprocating because he is always taking care of his devotee. He's always reminding him, his devotee how to serve in the best possible way. He's providing the facilities for the service itself. He's doing so many things, but giving himself is not something that is so easily attained. And sometimes he does that out of complete satisfaction and happiness with the devotee. And when he does, the devotee feels completely overjoyed and doesn't really even consider anything in life other than to please Krishna and experience the happiness that comes from that. But here, Krishna is, he's, um, he is swarat in the complete sense of the, the term. Swarat means independent. There are people who are independent up to a certain point, just like the living entities in the material world, us. We are independent, but we are, our independence is, is, within a certain range. It's not complete independence. The range of our independence is that we can choose to serve the Lord or not to serve the Lord. We can choose to take up devotional service or we can choose to not to take up devotional service or we can choose material activities. In other ways, we have a choice within the two realms of existence, material and spiritual. 
once we choose one or the other, then we have choices within that, how to go along with that energy. But that's the limit of our swarat, our independence. It's marginal. It's limited. But Krishna is completely swarat. None. Nitya nityanam chaitanas chaitananam. Echo, echo vidadati kamam. He is the person who maintains all living entities and all the different energies in existence. He controls it. He withdraws it. He increases it. He has complete control. Um, he knows all living entities, but no one knows him. Uh, he controls everything. We are completely controlled through his different energies. We cannot move it. Even, uh, we can't even bat an eyelash unless the energy that controls the eye movement allows it to happen. We don't even see that, but this is actually a fact. Everything we are, we are controlled tightly, <laughs> either by the spiritual energy or the material energy. Of course, in the spiritual energy, our control is our freedom. But in the spirit, material energy, our control is our bondage. But Krishna, he is the supreme ultimate controller in all aspects of existence, and no one controls him. <laughs> but then again, we see here, he's controlled by one thing, love. <laughs> so it is concluded that the only way he agreed to be tied up was by the love of Mother Yasoda. But then again, Prabhupada qualifies that, that although she had pure love, initially, her attempt to, to tie up Krishna was unsuccessful. And she had to continue to make efforts to try to tie him up. It's the intensity of her determination to tie him up increased more and more. And therefore, the expression of her love also increased more and more. And then at one point, Krishna was satisfied and with her love, that the love was so strong, he couldn't refuse, he couldn't not say no. He had to agree to be tied up. And therefore, Prabhupada writes in one particular statement, I'll, uh, maybe I'll see if I can uh, find that statement. It's on my desktop here. Let me see how I can leave here for a minute. How I can go to, how do I go to my desktop? Um, Guru Maharaj. Let me see. Uh, hmm? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Um, you can uh, exit the full screen and uh, go to your desktop Guru Maharaj. This says uh, view, view full screen? Yeah. Uh, I can't, oh yeah, share screen? No Guru Maharaj. Um, if you want to go to your desktop, you have to come out of the full screen. Uh, how do I do that? Uh, can you press escape uh, on your keyboard? Yeah, okay, okay, now I got it. Now I can do it, thank you. Okay, so I'll read something that is really interesting. Mother Yasoda wanted to bind Krishna not in order to chastise him, but because she thought that the child was so restless that he might leave the house in fear. That would be another disturbance. Therefore, because of full affection to stop Krishna from leaving the house, she wanted to bind him with rope. But then there's another statement here. That was by Srila Prabhupada. Okay, let me come closer to what I'm looking for. 
every individual can be measured, but Krishna has already shown that although he is an individual, the entire cosmic manifestation is within his mouth. All these points considered, Krishna cannot be measured. How then did Mother Soda want to measure him and bind him? We must conclude that this took place simply on the platform of pure transcendental love. This is the only cause. That's from Srila Prabhupada. Uh, it's also from the same uh, chapter, verses 13 and 14. We must conclude that this, this activity of her, her binding him took place only on the platform of transcendental love. There is no other cause to bind Krishna. Mm -hmm. So you see, it's uh, interesting. Yeah. So that when Krishna agrees, and this is true in any of our devotional activities, when Krishna is pleased, he, he shows his pleasure to his devotee in some form or another. When he's not pleased, then Shravma Avali came alone. Our activities really have very little value. And if he's slightly pleased, he'll give some indication in one way or the other by inspiring us in, to do more devotional service. So Krishna reciprocates in different ways, but when he's really pleased, completely pleased, completely satisfied, the devotee becomes transcendentally happy and exhibits uh, transcendental symptoms of devotion. That's when Krishna is really pleased. So we want to uh, please Krishna. And of course, he comes, shows his pleasure. Devotee becomes overwhelmed with happiness. And transcendental knowledge is there. The world looks so beautiful. Everything looks so wonderful. <laughs> but then Krishna leaves after some time. And then the devotee again is again making the efforts to please Krishna and bring him back. <laughs> But whether he comes back or not, if he's pleased, that is the, that is the um, uh, success of all of our efforts. Mm -hmm. So here, and then Prabhupada quotes this verse, Seva Mukhi Hi Jiva Devatasi Krishna Namadhi. So that word is, he reveals more and more to devotee as devotee advances in the service. Shiva Do, this service begins with the tongue, with chanting and taking prasadam. So the word Namadi refers to the name. And Nabhavedrayam Indriya, Seva Mukhehi Jiva Do, Swayam Eva Sparat Yada. And this verse is from the Padma Purana, I believe. And, and it says that here's the way to uh, advance in devotional service by using the tongue to chant and glorify the Lord, chant his holy name, and to take Krishna Prashadam, these are the two and only functions of the tongue in transcendental devotional service. This is very uh, uh, direct how we can see how the Lord so we hear these pastimes about Krishna every day, and we're um, getting some transcendental knowledge and inspiration from them. But we should re also think, let me find the opportunity to speak about these pastimes to others, to my friends, to family members, or people in general. Let me look for these opportunities and, and to speak. And when you speak about Krishna, Everyone will listen. Everyone will listen because Krishna is all attractive. Presenting it in a way that is very pleasing and uh, one becomes transcendentally enlivened and the hearer becomes transcendentally uh, benefited in so many ways. And that is the essence of devotional service. So we should always look for opportunities to speak whatever we hear or whatever we read about Krishna. And then our Krishna consciousness, if we don't speak it, 
we lose it. Always very difficult to remember it. Unless when we speak it, it becomes the future of memory. And when memory is there, Krishna consciousness is also there. So here, that's why Prabhupada makes this point that when that the service begins with the tongue, with chanting, and with taking Krishna Prashadam, as this verse from the Padma Purana indicates. Namadi Jivado. Namadi means the name. Jivado refers to the tongue. The tongue is the most difficult to control. It always wants to speak something. It, it, it's always reminding us how much we should be eating something, even if it's not even time, it still, it reminds us. So uh, we have to deter these wayward thoughts coming from the tongue and direct it towards these two activities. Hear and chant, hear the glories of the Lord, chant the glories of the Lord and take Krishna Prashadam at regular intervals. Uh, to inspire us in devotional service and to experience transcendental happiness. Okay, this is a wonderful little, and back to the main point, which is can't be emphasized enough. Krishna is totally and completely all powerful and independent. And it is love that attracts Krishna. And when that love becomes strong and Krishna becomes satisfied, and then Taktuay Taktua de Hampurna Janmani, Naiti Mam Naiti Shortuna, you're guaranteed to go back home and back to Godhead. Okay, so we'll stop there and see if there's any questions or comments. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much uh, for the very nice class. Um, uh, so important, like, uh, uh, to understand, like, how our service begins with the tongue, with chanting, glorifying, and taking prasadam. And uh, whatever we hear uh, about the glories of the Lord, we have to speak it to others, you know, about Krishna. So when memory is there, Krishna conscious is there. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Very nice points. Um, uh, dear devotees, uh, please um, have any questions, please unmute yourself or you can type in the chat box or you can raise your hand. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, my humble obeisance is to you Maharaj. Maharaj, how are you? Hare Krishna, my obeisance is to you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So Maharaj, I just wanted to quickly ask this question that is it okay for us to expect that Krishna should respond or we shouldn't be even expecting, you know, when we are chanting or anything. So is it okay for us to expect or we shouldn't, uh, you know, expect? You can pray, but don't, don't expect. <laughs> you, you can't, that means you're, you're asking some Krishna to do something. We don't order Krishna. We don't ask him anything. The only thing we ask them is how can we serve? That's our, that, that is our mood. How can I serve you? How can I please you? What can I do for you? Not that, uh, well, you have to reciprocate what I do. That's, that's business. Okay, uh, Maharaj. That, that's completely rejected by all the authorities. And Krishna is God, and, and, but he's all good, and he's all very, he's very kind and compassionate. We can pray, my dear Lord, please show your mercy to me. That you can play, but when he wants to do that and how he does that, that's up to him. So just he's pray. Moved, he's no, moved no, by no. our he's moved by our our devotion and not by our. Uh, you know, expectations. <laughs> and I'm sure if we keep praying, then Krishna will show his mercy. Uh, and serving at the same time. 
<laughs> Not just prayer, but service. Because prayer can be like currency. Well, I'm praying and then you have to reciprocate. <laughs> my, my, the currency is uh, the prayer and what I get is the merchandise you give me. <laughs> That's business. So Maharaj, does that mean when we are praying to Krishna, we should not be praying for any specific things, like not material or even devotional, nothing. Just pray. Just leave it up to Krishna. All you do is serve. And Krishna, Krishna takes care of his devotees. There's no question about that. How he does that, he does that in different ways. But that's up to him, how he wants to respond to each devotee accordingly. Or sometimes he doesn't respond just to increase our enthusiasm. He is all powerful and he's all independent, but he's all good at the same time. Uh, so as Prabhupada gave some examples, the Christians, they say, my dear Lord, please give us our daily bread. And they pray like that. Prabhupada said, we don't say that. We say, my dear Lord, what would you like to eat? <laughs> Wow. Thank you, Maharaj, that, that you've, you know, you answered the question so well. And I've taken notes, so I can just read it that again and again and not pray to Krishna, you know, to say, can you help me progress spiritually or anything like that? Yeah, he, he, uh, that, I just got a letter today one devotee wanted to pray for another devotee who was sick. And uh, they asked that devotee, and that devotee who was sick said, no, because I don't want to bother Krishna with my problems. Krishna knows everything. So why should I even ask him for anything? If he, he wants to do, he, he can do whatever he wants because he, he is all good. So the devotee wasn't, even though he was sick, he didn't even want any, anyone to pray for him because he was thinking, why bother Krishna? And that's, that's ultimately pure love, or pure devotion, pure surrender. Mm -hmm. To ask Krishna for anything falls into category of, you know, uh, it's about me. <laughs> but you can ask Krishna, please give me pure love of God. Please give me the association of devotees. Please give me the intelligence how to serve you nicely. These things, everything that centers around serving Krishna or advancing in Krishna consciousness, we can pray for and ask for. But when it comes to some personal need or some desire, we don't, we don't bother with that. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. That's love. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. So nice to see you after a long time. I know. Sorry, Maharaj. I've just, you know, been uh, not feeling very well and then again, been very busy with work. But I'm going to definitely try, you know, and try and um, block this slot so I can come every day. Mm -hmm. how, how good. How is Dear Prashant? I haven't heard from him either. I know. He's, I think, just entering home now. He had gone to work. If he comes, Ashok Maharaj is asking, how are you? Come oh, over. Yeah, so yeah, no, he's, he's keeping well as well, but just busy. Yeah. The lost couple. The lost couple has come back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so nice to see you, Dira, after so long. Hi. Thank you very much, Maharaj. It's my pleasure. I was I was so deeply thinking about you earlier today. Yes, and I I think about you once in a while also, and I think, where is he? <laughs> How's he doing? <laughs> Thank you very much, Maharaj. I was uh, I was on my way to Croydon um, or to Redbridge, and Croydon is not too far from there. So I was thinking that I should I should probably go and uh, meet Rindav and Das Prabhu. But uh, yes, it didn't happen. I had to come back home to do some other chores. Vrindavan Das, the, the astrologer? No, Vrindavan Chandra Prabhu. Sorry, I meant. Oh, Vrindavan Chandra. Oh, okay. 
Is it Vrindavan Nath? Yeah, I'm yeah, so Vrindavan sorry, Maharaj. My apologies. Vrindavan, 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 Vivek Prabhu. Vivek Prabhu is what I meant. Yeah. Oh, Vrindavan, Vrindavan Nath. Vrindavan Nath. Yes. Sorry, Prabhu. Yeah. Sorry, Maharaj. My apologies. Vrindavan Dham and you have Vrindavan Nath. Yeah. Well, I'm happy. I'm my best wishes to you and all the family. And uh, please, uh, please reappear once in a while and give us your association. <laughs> sure you do, my apologies and my uh, my apologies that I've not been able to do that. Sincerely apologize for that, Maharaj. Thank you and your good wife, uh, Mataji. I have an embarrassing question. Maharaj, my, my name. I'm sure you forgot my name, Nandini. 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 Nandini Radha, right? Yes, Maharaj. Nandini Radha Devi Das. Yes, Maharaj. No, Maharaj. No, not at all. Uh, you know. I should have said, but it's okay. Yeah, so, you know, um, it's just so nice to see you, Maharaj. The minute I've seen you, I feel like so motivated already. And you, you've answered like, you know, so nicely to my question. So I'm going to definitely change the way I pray now. And your, your, your relationship with Krishna will be more sweet and sublime. Uh, that's that's what we have to do. And Maharaj, when are you coming back? We can't, you know, can't wait to have you back in London. Yeah, it's on the list. I'm in America right now. Oh, so Maharaj, when do you come back to Croatia? Uh, Slovenia, Croatia, Slovenia in about maybe 10 days. And then London? Then uh, I'll be staying down for there for a couple months, maybe London in, in the in the, in the beginning of spring. Oh, yay. You know, still a long time, but at least you've got some, you know, rough idea. So we, we, we can work around, you know, that's that there's going to be many months, yeah, before we get to see you. Good, good. I, I pray everyone is happy and healthy. Yes, Maharaj. Good, Thank good. you, Maharaj. Lovely to see you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Uh, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you for your wonderful smile. <laughs> yeah, dear devotees, uh, any more questions? Please uh, raise your hand or you can type in the chat box. Sri Devi Mataji, please go ahead. Sri Devi. Dear Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Prabhupada, all glories to you, Guru Maharaj. I uh, sincerely apologize. I don't know, somehow I got caught in, caught up in something happening here. And I came in a little late, but uh, if I may, I think Namita was talking about questions to ask of Krishna. Right? Prayers no, no, she was asking, should we have, should we... Uh, like, Expect Krishna to reciprocate. Okay, okay. Well, I have always doubted myself about this because my prayer to Krishna always is, please take me back, Krishna. Please take me back. I want to come back to you. Is that something I'm asking for myself and therefore it's a personal uh, thing? Well, you may not be ready. <laughs> so he might, not, he might think, well, I will, but when she's ready... So even though I'm asking, I'm not ready, you mean? You may not be ready. Why, why take a chance? <laughs> you, say, you say, my dear Lord, you can take me back or you can leave me here. Whatever you do, I'm your devotee. <laughs> but I don't want to come back here to this material world, Guru Maharaj. I want to go back to the spiritual world. I want to be with Krishna. Okay, then, then come to pure devotional service. Okay. That's the hard part. Ayabila Sina Sunya, Gyana Kaman and Avritam, Anukulena Krishna, Silanam Bhaktiutamam. Rupa Goswami gives the definition of pure devotional service in the, in the introduction of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Uh, uh, bring up that verse, Aya Vilasita, Anya Vilasita Sunya. 
some uh, Srimati, can you bring up that verse? Anya Vilasita Sunya? Yes, Guru Maharaj. It's from uh, Nectar Devotion Introduction. This is pure devotional service uh, as described by Sri Vishnu. It can be found in Prabhupada's lectures throughout. Uh, Anya, A N Y A, Anya Vila Sita Sunya. Anya Vila Sita Sunya. Nectar Devotion Introduction. It's, it's worth, he, this is pure devotional service. Within this, uh, within this uh, definition, everything is there. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj, one second. Oh. I'm unable to find in... Uh... Can I um can I get this uh, from Chaitanya Charitamrita? Um, yeah, you'll find it there easily. Ayya Bila Sita Sunya Gyana Kamana Avrita Manukulinas Krishna Sunanam Bhakti Uttamam. One should render transcendental loving service to the Supreme Lord favorably and without desire for material profit or gains through fruitive activities or philosophical speculation. That is called pure devotional service. And there's probably a very interesting purport that would really explain it here. But one should render transcendental loving service. That means service that is guided by the instructions of the spiritual master in relationship to Krishna in a favorable way, not trying for any gain, either materially or philosophically, subtly. That is pure devotional service. So it has to be for Krishna with a desire to please Krishna. That's all. And so study these, uh, these, uh, definitions and ex explanations, especially this particular purport, and you'll get a deeper understanding of the, of the verse. Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj, I will certainly study it, but just a quick follow-up question. So when, when we pray, when I pray, I pray to Krishna, please, please help me to get my original constitutional position back, my eternal service to you in the spiritual world, my spiritual form in which I can serve you unlimitedly. So is that asking for my spiritual body, spiritual form, is that asking for a kind of liberation? That won't come until, you, until you're ready. You can ask for it, but it won't come until you're ready. Until you but qualify. It's not wrong to ask you have for to, it, right? If you want to make devotional service easy, it's really easy. Just say, my dear Lord, how can I serve you? Let me serve you to please you. That's all. Let me serve your devotees. Just stay fixed on that. If you take me back to Godhead, that's that's your that's up to you. If you leave me here, that's up to you. Mm. Just make it easy. Just just give me service, Lord, as much as I can to in such a way that I can please you in, in by my efforts. That's it. I want to please you. I want to push on religious principles. I want to uh, associate with your devotees and, 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 and serve them. These are the things we should pray for. Not like, well, I want this. I want to go back to how Godhead. I want my transcendental form. I want, yeah, that is not. <laughs> okay. 
These things will come when you reach certain stages in bhakti. Mm. Okay. Yes, bhakti, bhakti reveals bhakti. Yes, I, I realize it's a very neophyte uh, stage of, you know, asking like a child, give me this, give me that, give me that, rather than what can I give you, Shri, Krishna, like that. Yeah, that's, you know, Krishna's taking care of his devotees, don't worry. You get everything you need and more. Yes, Guru Maharaj, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Raj. Hey Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Maharaj, I have a question. I'm getting different answers from different devotees. I hope you can, uh, you can, you, I know that you will give me the right answer. Uh, sometimes one is put through uh, extreme difficulties at times and uh, some devotees say that that is just karma and you need to just tolerate it. And other devotees say, well, that's mercy because you need to feel that complete helplessness and full dependence on Krishna. Uh, Maybe they're both right. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. It's coming from different, different ways, but it doesn't matter how you take it. To just take it as, as an uh, Krishna's mercy, as an opportunity to uh, take more shelter of Krishna, to pray to Krishna, to uh, to see how you can uh, learn from these experiences and move forward in your spiritual life. I'll try to figure out where it's coming from. You might you just waste time, and you may not be right anyway. Thank you, Maharaj. I mean, we can discuss that as a general topic. The body should discuss that. But when it happens to you, don't really try to figure it out. Just accept it as an opportunity for greater shelter, greater devotion, greater, more detachment from the material world. But it is a point of discussion. But when it happens to us, Take advantage of it. And don't try to figure out where it's coming from. <laughs> maybe past karma, maybe Krishna's giving you some difficulty, or maybe just the material energy is working in such a way. Thank you, Maharaj. But if we see everything coming from Krishna, either directly or indirectly, then we take shelter of Krishna. That's opportunities for greater prayer, or greater for some detachment, for gaining some transcendental knowledge. Everything that happens to a devotee can be used to further one's Krishna consciousness. That's nice, Maharaj. It's nice meditation. To, to understand it deeper, then you speak to other devotees. This is happening to me. What can I, uh, well, what can I learn from this? What can I gain from this? Not so much where is it coming from. But what what mm -hmm. can I, how can I benefit from it? That's the question. And Prabhupada tells a story. There's two stories. There's one in there's one in the Vedic tradition, and there's one in the Chinese tradition. I like the one in the Chinese tradition. <laughs> I'll tell that one. 
And there was a man, he's living in a village in, in China, and he has, uh, he's quite poor, he's a villager, and he has one horse. And he has a son. So the horse runs away. And now he has no horse. And so the villagers, his friends say, oh, bad luck, bad luck, bad luck. So he says, he responds, good luck, bad luck, who knows? <laughs> so after some time, the horse comes back and he brings a whole bunch of horses with him. Now he has a lot of horses. So then uh, the villagers say, oh, good luck, good luck. He says, good luck, bad luck, who knows? So then one day, his son, young boy, teenager, he's on the horse and he falls off and he breaks his leg. And everyone says, oh, bad luck, bad luck. He says, good luck, bad luck, who knows? So after some time, the country gets involved with a war and they're conscripting the young men into the service. So they come to his village they come to his house and they, they, want, they see his son that he is he's aged, he's aged to go into the service, but he has a broken leg. So they pass him up, they don't take him. So all the villagers say, good luck, good luck. He says, good luck, bad luck, who knows. So when you judge a thing by, by initially by what you see, you can't see that there may be something else to it. People win the lottery, they get a lot of money and then their whole life goes to hell. Winning the lottery sounds like good fortune, but then again, something else comes and because of that. So material events or situations don't really indicate anything clear. What it is is that well, how we how we how we take shelter of Krishna and how we understand things in relationship to our devotional service. That is where the devotees put their attention on. Not through gain or loss or anything like that. Is that clear? Makes sense? Yes, thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. Krishna is the factor, not the incident itself. <laughs> the incident can bring us closer to Krishna or farther away from Krishna. Thank you, that's helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's so many people that undergo sickness and because of that, just I'll give you an example, a really clear example. You know, we preach in prisons. So occasionally I meet someone in prison who says, well, I'm so fortunate that I went to prison. I was able to meet the devotees and devotional service. Now, I'm, now I understand everything. He says, only because I went to prison. And probably if I didn't go to prison, I wouldn't have met the devotees. So um, yeah, they speak like that sometimes. When they're in prison, they don't think like that. But when they, when they have the experience, oh, uh, because of going to prison, I, I met the devotees, I'm engaged in devotional service. It's not like they want to stay in prison. They still want to get out, but still they see going to prison was the situation that allowed them to come to Krishna consciousness. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you, um, Guru, Maharaj. Guru Maharaj. I don't see any questions. I have a question. Is that okay? Can I ask? Yes, yes. Uh, so, uh, Guru Maharaj, I have questions like, uh, I think last class uh, you have mentioned like uh, anything material or spiritual effect, uh, spiritual, it doesn't affect Krishna, only pure love will affect Krishna. So how should I understand this? Like spiritual means uh, pure love. Right, Guru Maharaj? Just like if my understanding is wrong, uh, how should uh, I differentiate between? Well, not spiritual doesn't necessarily mean pure love. The essence, the essence of spirituality is pure love. But spirituality is also, uh, <coughs> well, it can be mixed. It can be mixed with things with material, just like. There is devotional service in the mode of goodness, devotional service in the mode of passion, and devotional service in the mode of ignorance. So devotional service is there in all three, but it's not pure. We speak about pure devotional service. That, even pure devotional service, until it comes to the stage of prema, And then love, pure love is not revealed. It's on the platform of bhava. Bhava is affection for Krishna. That's also pure. But it hasn't reached the perfection of the stage of pure love, which, is, which are some of the characteristics that come later in the higher stages of, of affection of bhava. So bhava is affection for Krishna, prema is love for Krishna. Both are, are pure spiritual uh, engagements. You read, read the symptoms of bhava, and read the symptoms of prema. It's an intensification of the affection that brings it one to love. And then when love is there, it goes through different stages, reaching higher and higher stages of love. So spiritual is more like in three modes, uh, Good Maharaj. And, uh, spiritual is like a what? It's, it's in like three modes. Like um, spiritual is uh, how we have to understand. Like, no, it... pure spirituality has nothing to do with the modes. Okay. okay. But there is spirituality. There is devotional activity, which is spiritual. That's mixed with the modes of material energy. Okay. So bhava is more like uh, your affection towards Krishna. Pure, pure affection, yeah. Pure affection, yeah. The so, love is a, a, is affection taken to a higher level. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, so much. I just want to ask a like, question, like uh, related to bhava. Um, just want to understand a little bit. So my friend actually had this question. So whenever she goes to like any Krishna temple or she reads any um, uh, books related to Lord Krishna, uh, she gets very emotional and she starts crying itself, even if she reads a Bhagavad Gita or anything. So she was, uh, she's not sure um, is due to any like a bhava or like what is this? Um, she wants These are symptoms of bhava, but then again, we have to see what is it just this sounds like just she's feeling she's feeling that happiness in her heart that's probably due to her past devotional life it's coming out again now as soon as she comes in contact because they like say people leave off in their last life and begin in their present life from where they leave off in their previous life sounds like symptoms of bhava Oh. Tears in the eyes. Uh, what is that verse? Uh, 
Yugaitam nimeshena chakshusha pravishaitam shunyaitam jagat sarvam govinda virahename. What's the verse before that? Um, Nainam gladadasru daraya vadanam gadgara rudaya gira ulakar nichitam vapukada tabanam agrahame bhavishiti. Um, what is the translation for that? Nainam gladadasru daraya. When will my mind? When will my when will I share? When will my eyes be decorated with the tears of your love? Flowing constantly when I chant your holy name. When will my voice choke up and when will the hairs of my body stand and end at the recitation of your name? So that's the Baba stage. Mm -hmm. okay. That's Baba. Mm -hmm. Feeling separation and feeling tears. Now the next one, you guy, um, you guy, itam nime shena chakshusha pravisha itam shunya itam jagat sarvam govinda virahena me. Then, then that's even more intense. That's really longing for the association of Krishna, and feeling really lost without his presence. <coughs> that is a, that's on the that's on a preliminary stage of pure love. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So, can we experience these um, even though you're not in the ocean service and you're not? You can get you can get symptoms of these higher mellow, higher relationships, but when they're constant, then you're on that stage. When they're not, when they're not constant, then there's a just they're just uh, special mercy given by Krishna, or some situation that brings you your your mood is just right. Your mood is just right, and you come in contact with the devotional energy and the right consciousness. You can experience ec ecstatic symptoms, but that doesn't indicate you're on these higher platforms. It's just that the mood was right, and that's mentioned in nectar devotion. Even a brand new person can experience ecstatic symptoms, but that doesn't mean they're on the higher platforms. It just means that their consciousness was in the right mood. When they came in contact with the process of devotional service, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the mood was right, it was conducive to affection, to love. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Yeah. I'll convey yeah. this to uh, yeah. my friend. Thank you so much. So we take these higher symptoms to be indicating of these higher stages, but they are not necessarily uh, the platform the person is on because these symptoms can be experienced even in the very beginning stages of bhakti. There. <clears throat> Special mercy given by the Lord. So. Yes, Guruvaj. Thank you, Guruvaj. Yeah. And sometimes, like, um, um, even though um, we are doing a devotional service, we experience sometimes these symptoms, but it's uh, flickering. It doesn't stay. So that means it's just like uh, it's not a real um, ecstasy we are feeling. It's it? the ecstasy is real, but doesn't. But it's just symptomatic of the consciousness that you had at that particular time. Oh, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. That's all. Okay. If you, let me see. If you light a match and mm -hmm. it's windy out, the match will blow out. But if you light a match when there's no wind, the match will stay lit. Lighting a match is the same in both cases, but the atmosphere is different. Yeah. Yes, good much. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So your friend, if she has this experience every time she goes to the temple, and she's uh, experiencing when she reads, mm -hmm. it's pretty much indicated that in her last life she was, you know, nicely engaged in devotional service. Now it's all coming back again. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'll convey this to her. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
No, don't tell her because it'll spoil it. <laughs> Just let her experience what she's okay. experiencing. Okay, very much. When we try to figure out everything, then we, the mind gets in the way and then it blocks all these natural symptoms. <laughs> mm, yes, it's very much very true. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we have a question, Guru Maharaj. In the chat box. From um, Nandini Radha. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. So you remembered my name this time. If I forget so soon, and <laughs> if I come on the call, you will remember my name. So I'm going to come on the call every day now. <laughs> All you have to do is change your name. <laughs> yes, Maharaj, I will. I will change because this is my work phone. That's why it's got my, you know, uh, my other name, I should say. So, Maharaj, my question is that if we are put through vulnerable situations, should we take that as an indication that Krishna wants us to pray more? Because when we are in these vulnerable situations, I mean, you know, I personally tend to pray a lot more. If you take it that way, then you are you're in you're in the right consciousness. Wow. Okay, Maharaj. Yeah, mm. you should take it. You should take it that way. Yeah. Because this happened, Maharaj, just before Karthik. Something happened and then I said, you know what, Krishna, I'm actually going to do more rounds and I'm going to be obviously thinking a lot more and hearing lots more lectures. So I thought, you know what, Krishna wants me to do this. And that's why he's put me in this situation. Mm -hmm. That's that's good. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> okay, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Increase your devotion. The whole thing is to increase our devotion, increase our attachment to Krishna. When we get when we get so attracted and attached for Krishna, then the material world is gone. Then we're in the spiritual consciousness. The idea is to get more and more attracted and attached to Krishna. And that comes from hearing about him, serving him, serving his devotees, worshiping him in his deity form. All these things will increase our attraction. Yes, Maharaj. Love for Krishna is in the heart. It just has to be revealed. That's all. Absolutely, Maharaj. <laughs> okay Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj thank you thank you okay Suda I think we, we should end here yes Guru Maharaj Guru Maharaj there's a question um, in the chat box you want to uh, just that question Devi's got a question uh, Sukhava Mataji uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj my humble obeisances to your lotus feet Thank you for explaining very nicely. How should we serve Krishna and pray to Krishna? Oh, that's just, she's just making a comment then. That's oh, right. okay, okay. I thought she was asking a question. How should we serve? Okay, good much. Okay, good much. So should we end the call, good much, yeah? Um, <clears throat> yeah. Thank you so much, good much, for the very Thank nice you. Thank you. We'll see you all tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to be in a different location and I have to see, I hope the internet it works there. So, um, so Guru we'll, Maharaj, uh, um, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Tomorrow is uh, is Khan Harrisburg's class, Guru Maharaj, morning, 8 o'clock. Oh, Eastern. 8 o'clock. That's right. Thanks for the reminder. Uh, yes. So that's at 8 o'clock. Um, so yeah, I, I, should, I should be okay with that. Yes, good much. Thank you so much. Okay. Yes, good much. Thank you. Thank you for all your wonderful services. Thank you. Very Hare much. Krishna Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much for a lovely class. Thank, thank you for the devotees for asking questions. It was really nice. Yeah.